This is part six and the final part of my Mr. Series Monsoon Deep Dive, where we're going to be talking about the Parasites mode called Resonester. So what is Resonester? It is a dual voice four part resonator or comb filter with a built in capability for polyphonic car plus strong plucked <laughs> string synthesis. What is car plus strong you ask? Here. Let me show you a Wikipedia page. I have no idea otherwise. So I have a note here that just says, as I was preparing for this walkthrough, uh, I initially thought that there's no way I would ever use Reson Resonester mode because I already have rings, especially when I get other functionality out of Monsoon that I like better. Uh, and then I, I don't know what I did differently this time, but I stumbled upon some pretty amazing sound design in Resonester mode that is definitely not like rings at all, so I, I take it back. I actually can find myself using this quite often. In fact, I can I can see taking the sounds that I'm gonna about to generate for this deep dive, I could see definitely taking those and putting them into some kind of a tape looper or something and using them in, in a patch uh, down the road. The sounds coming out of just monsoon. I mean, this is this is Pamela's to plates to monsoon, and nothing else in the rack really is being used except for LFOs, you know, from modulation sources, but no other sound tweakers. And it is just astounding what is coming out of this little module. I'm, it is genuinely my favorite module of all uh, to play with. So how does Resonester do what it does? Uh, let's see, from the manual, it, uh, it takes audio input and feeds one of two voices or resonators Pitches can then be modulated, playing the resonator like an oscillator, which is similar to what Rings does. Each voice has four parts, which can be set to different pitches to, to form chords. Wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> so, and the controls uh, excite the resonator, creating uh, plucked sounds like that on a guitar. First, we're going to go into resonator mode by, again, holding the button, the display button down for 2.5 seconds and tapping until we get the first, third, and fourth lights lit, and that is Resonester mode. So for the sliders in this mode, again, we have different functionality with the sliders. Uh, the POS, uh, the position slider in this case, does timbre and duration of noise bursts. Uh, below center is more dampening and longer, and above, above center is shorter and higher pitched. The density sets the decay length, so above the three-quarter mark, decay is infinite, allowing you to play the resonator like an oscillator. So that sounded pretty cool. Um, for the demo, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crank this up and show you, but I, we're starting at zero because this is what the manual, what you see here is what the manual recommends you start at. The size slider is similar to the um, Mutable Instruments braids and offers a different number of chord patterns. It seems to be the best at around 40% just below center, at least in my testing. Uh, and then the texture slider is back to a low pass or band pass with increasing resonance. So if, raise this with the density to start hearing the differences. When you're raising density, then you can raise this and you'll start hearing tonal differences. Now the, the potentiometers down here t uh, also take on an entirely different role than they did in the granular mode. And in this case, it, the mix knob acts as a distortion effect, which was pretty crazy. And this actually sounds really cool when you when I'm gonna I'm gonna slowly pan it up to show you what that sounds like. Uh, stereo spreads the voices across the stereo field, but again, I do not hear multiple voices clearly. But uh, we'll, we'll we'll mess with that a little bit later as well. Uh, feedback uh, strikes the harmonics of a string being resonated, and uh, it, my notes say to twist this guy a lot in my demo, so I'll do that in a second as well. And then reverb scatters the effect, adding random delay to the signal. So for our, for our audio part of this, I'm just going to set everything up to default, uh, default positions in the manual and start twisting from there. First, let me start the clock. So what you're hearing right now is the resonator playing the input, the input signals, but it only seems to be in one in one speaker, it's coming out of the right speaker right now. And I'm not exactly sure why that is, but I know when I plug the trigger in here in a second, it's going to suddenly start ping-ponging back and forth. 
So this is the trigger from Pamela's. So I can't explain what's going on here. But now uh, I'm going to start moving some of the sliders around. Like I'll bring density up to around 70%. So clearly, you hear the resonance, resonance, right? So again, you turn the, the tuning down so it, it, it will detune the audio buffer. It starts giving this really beautiful sound. I'm going to bring the size up a bit. I'm going to turn I'm going to turn the mix down to a, this is remember this is now a distortion effect. I'm going to turn it down to around 30%. So you hear that kind of distortion effect in there? That's kind of cool. So there's a couple of interesting things going on here. First off, you hear this ticking sound, which is the clock, you know, the clock tick. If we start turning up some of the other options, like the stereo mix. So, and then uh, according to my notes, if I play with the feedback here, So from this point, I'm just going to start messing this up, and, uh, and let's just see what happens. I have uh, two medium speed LFOs coming out of Oct here that I'm going to plug into stereo and feedback. And it's a it's a it's a low speed on you know, out of oct. I'm gonna take my sample and hold out of Modbox. I'm gonna put it in volt per octave. Here. I'm going to take this uh, this other LFO out of uh, Modbox and put it into Density, and it's a slow sine wave. And then finally, I'm going to take a take a an LFO out of Batumi and put it into size. So now now I'll tune things up a little bit.
that. I think I want another slow LFO out of Ox into density. Swap those around a little bit. So this is the kind of thing that I can set up in the morning at, at, and, and then just listen to it all day long. I don't have any idea what's going on. <laughs> but I love that sound. <laughs> Speed up the LFOs a little. I guess I hear a chord in there. So again, that's that's controlled by size here. Turn the sequencer off, so now it's, it's just Monsoon playing with its buffer. And that's, that low, gritty, amazing sound is better than half the keyboards I own. It sounds fantastic. It's literally shaking the room here in the studio. So that's it for the uh, Resin Ester mode of Mr. Series Monsoon. And that also concludes this six-part deep dive for the Monsoon module and its six modes in the Parasites firmware. 
I have learned so much about Monsoon doing this video, so I thank you for recommending that I do a deeper dive of Monsoon, because now I am really using it almost the most of everything that I have currently, because I, again, I really love doing sound design, even more so than music or generative stuff, because the sounds that come out of these, just your rack in general, are so fascinating to me. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful year of making noise. So thank you for hanging out with me on my journey, and Happy New Year. We'll see you later.